while barriers are a protection, they are also a cage. While being shields, they are also traps. a beaucoup intéressé pour l'exposition de cette année, c'était bien sûr quand euh, Hinek et Radek nous ont dit pour cette année 30 ans de la chute du mur il faut absolument faire une exposition qui est à voir avec euh, les murs, les murs que nous avons en interne, les murs que nous avons en externe et surtout aussi sur les 40 000 km de murs qui existent actuellement euh, partout dans le monde on a, on a pensé, euh, en 89, on était un peu tous et toutes euh, naïves et pensions que maintenant, ces, euh, ces histoires évoluent, il n'y aurait plus jamais de mur, mais ce n'était pas le cas. On en construit de plus en plus. Bon, J'imagine que Radek va le présenter. Il y a M. Wienhoeffa qui est venu exprès. Il a, cette salle ici est consacrée à lui. Il, a, il voyage partout dans le monde pour photographier justement les murs dont je parle. Et dans les autres salles, vous verrez d'autres types de murs. Effectivement, nous sommes partis de l'idée des 30 ans depuis la chute du mur, pas pour en faire un aspect historique ou de commémoration simplement. Évidemment, vous voyez, et on en parlera un peu plus avec M. Biedenhofer, il y a aussi certaines des images où vous verrez le mur de Berlin lui-même, puisque c'est là que le projet aussi a commencé, comme on verra après. Mais bien sûr, l'idée, c'est beaucoup plus que ce que Aina a déjà mentionné, c'est de faire le bilan de, de toutes les, tous les murs, toutes les barrières euh, qui existent, physiques ou immatérielles, euh, dans le monde aujourd'hui, à l'extérieur et à l'intérieur de, de nos sociétés. Donc, euh, donc ça, c'était vraiment le point de départ. On a toujours privilégié des, des questions, des questionnements, euh, qui sont euh, des questionnements d'actualité pour ces pays-là, mais aussi plus généralement pour le Luxembourg, pour l'Europe de l'Ouest. Pour ce qui est des thèmes, bien sûr, je voudrais mentionner euh, euh, le, le projet de Warren Richardson. Euh, C'est un photographe, un reporter photographe qui s'est euh, donc maintenant euh, concentré sur, sur, la, sur la photographie documentaire. Il est connu mondialement euh, pour la photo que vous avez certainement vue déjà pour la plupart d'entre vous, euh, qui a reçu le World Press Photo Award de 2016. Et donc, ce projet-là, qui nous a tenu particulièrement à cœur, comme, comme les autres, mais... Euh, dont on est parti en fait, c'était le premier qu'on a vraiment finalisé, qu'on a validé, euh, parce que c'était une triple figure de l'exclusion. Euh, donc qui dit les murs, dit il y a quelque chose qui est à l'intérieur du mur, et forcément ce qui est à l'extérieur. Donc ce qui est à l'extérieur en l'occurrence, euh, quand, quand, quand on parle des, des, des humains, ce sont les exclus. Et, euh, et notamment la triple figure, je dirais, euh, très euh, symbolique, donc d'une part du réfugié, d'autre part du, du sans-abri, et troisièmement, comme tu l'as mentionné aussi, aux personnes qui, euh, qui ont des addictions, donc euh, toutes exclues et en marge donc, de, de la société, euh, entre guillemets, normale. Donc euh, après, il faut voir euh, comment on définit la, la normalité, évidemment, mais en tout cas, socialement parlant, euh, ce sont des figures d'exclusion. Euh, bien sûr... Un petit peu dans, dans, le même, dans le même registre, je dirais, prolongement de ça, le, le projet donc, de Christophe Gau, très beau projet euh, documentaire donc, avec, les, euh, avec les personnes qui ont un, un handicap, différents, différents handicaps, comme vous le verrez. Et, euh, et donc, ils, eux, se heurtent pour eux, vraiment, ils, ils vivent les murs, c'est concret. Pour nous, ça peut être abstrait. Oui, mais est-ce que c'est vraiment des murs On peut quand même se parler, etc. Pour eux, les murs, ils sont déjà là. Donc, l'approche, c'est essayer de casser ces murs, ou en tout cas, essayer de les fissurer et de trouver un, une communication, une entente, quelque chose qui se passe, qui passe à travers ces murs-là. Donc, euh, comme on voit dans, dans certaines photos, parfois, on a l'impression que quelque chose passe. Parfois, non, bien sûr, parce que... Euh, bah, vu que les, les situations sont, sont très différentes et, et les formes d'handicap et, et les personnalités tout simplement donc euh, après il y a encore deux projets euh, dont, dont, que je n'ai pas mentionné mais un qui euh, je pense est important et, et pour nous symbolique c'est un projet qui décrit euh, la communauté euh, balte mais plus particulièrement lituanienne dans une petite ville euh, en Angleterre juste après le Brexit donc les photos étaient, ont été prises en 2017 et 2018 
Donc, cette communauté, cette, 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 cette petite ville où il y avait déjà des tensions, où les tensions se sont exacerbées après le Brexit, bien sûr. Et euh, voilà, donc ça, c'est euh, simplement de, de montrer que les frontières sont là aussi entre euh, communautés, ce qui est un thème, évidemment, euh, d'autant plus prégnant euh, ici, ici au Luxembourg, où, euh, où les, les communautés vivent un petit peu quand même euh, les unes à côté des autres. Kai, first of all, thanks a lot uh, to be here. Just recently now, you're coming from Belfast. And I think it's, to start, it's really, at this, this precise moment in time, a very interesting story. So if you can... Yeah, well, um, we did an outdoor show in, in Belfast. And this year, actually, so here we have... This picture is from Belfast. So, so 50 years ago, on the 12th of uh, September... Um, 1969, they started to build the first separation wall between Catholics and Protestants in, uh, in Belfast. And also we have 30 years of the fall of the Berlin Wall this year. So basically on this occasion we, um, we mounted um, altogether 36 of these pictures, uh, 3 by 9 meters on 370 meters um, of the peace line. So this is what I basically did uh, um, last, uh, last week. With 1,100 square meters. Yeah, well, it's about, it's about me. Yeah, <laughs> Just for a comparison, one, this is one, one thousand. Yeah, it's one. It's 1,090 square so, meters. So, so the show is 200 times bigger than what you see. <laughs> but that's just statistics, you know. So, and yeah. So we hope that it helps a little bit the communication between the two community uh, communities. So between Catholics and Protestants, and it's also in the framework of. Um, of the Brexit that hopefully will not come because for Northern Ireland that will have uh, grave consequences. So I wanted maybe to come back to the very origin of this project because now this project, if I read well, it started basically with 89, so with the, with the fall of the Berlin now, Wall. Okay, it's a little bit exaggerated, but um, I was in the first semester basically when the Berlin Wall came down and a famous photographer from, from the US actually told us on the 9th of, no, uh, no, on the 10th, no, 11th. No, on the 11th of November, if he would have time, he would go immediately to Berlin. And that's actually what we did. We, we went in a very fast car in the night. We drove uh, to Berlin and then we made pictures basically for, for four days um, uh, of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And for me, it was the most positive political event of my life because it was really the end of, a, yeah, of the period of the Cold War. And, you know, because... Uh, for me, this was very real because I, um, so the German army is a conscript army. I, at that time, I was a conscript army, and I actually served in a in a unit that provided um, tactical atomic weapons um, to German units. So officially, the German army had no atomic weapons, but that was a lie. So basically, these weapons would have served to, um, yeah, basically to stop a massive tank attack uh, from, from, uh, from Warsaw Pact troops. And so these weapons, they would have destroyed about, yeah, depends on what, between 5 and 15 kilometers diameter. Um, and that mostly, they would all have been in Germany, you know. And all these, yeah, this was three of these units that existed in, uh, in Germany. So if there would have ever been a hot war, it would have been a, a super big disaster that most of the ordinary population didn't know. 
But uh, how come that, okay, you were there as a student on the Berlin Wall itself, yeah. but when was the, the, the idea born and how uh, uh, you, that now you, you will really make a project and at, at the time do you think it's going to be a long-term project or, or it was just, you know, like... No, I mean, the, the general, I mean, the general notion was, in, was especially around the fall of the Berlin Wall that this is now the end of, of border walls in history and that we have a, have a free world. But... Um, I mean, I wasn't aware of that, but um, I here. See, actually, this is um, this is the American. So this is uh, it's called uh, Operation Gatekeeper. You know, so that was actually in 1992. Uh, the Americans started to build a, a fence on the or a barrier on the American-Mexican border, and actually, these strips, this is metal plates, and they were used in the first American-Iraqi Gulf War. You can stick these things together and make a huge landing strip even for very big planes. And this is actually the first one that was built up uh, after the Berlin Wall. And I worked a lot in the occupied Palestinian territories for a very long time and I was really sick of it. But in 2003, uh, a writer from Switzerland who is a good friend of mine, he called me and said, yeah, we could, should go and you know, make a report on that for Neue Zürcher Zeitung. And I didn't want to go, but eventually a friend of mine, he, he borrowed me a panorama camera that makes really big negatives. They are six by, six by 17 centimeters. And uh, off we went and yeah, the, it was a big success financially. And then another German magazine wanted to have something. So I went back and with these two trips, I went to my publisher and he said he's going to publish a book on it. And then we published in 2007. And then I internationalized it basically and started to work first in Northern Ireland. And then it, uh, I basically extended it and I'm still extending it, you know, so. But I think one of the places where you most spend uh, time and most photos come with, not only for this project, but also for other projects that you did, was of course the, the border between um, Israel and, and the Palestinian territories. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, a whole, it was a whole book and actually we will... We will publish now a book um, whenever this this winter or in spring um, that covers basically the period from 2003 to uh, to 2018. But border-wise, I spend uh, actually a lot of time also on the American-Mexican border. But it's really a, it's a huge space, you know. So I really went from the Pacific, uh, all these 3,200 kilometers uh, uh, to the Atlantic. I know that you, you also did um, uh, an exhibition in the uh, Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris, so the, in, uh, in Palais de Tokyo, and no, there was also some controversy you know, related to it. Uh. Yeah, but that was, uh, that was basically, that had nothing to do with wards immediately. It was just about um, um, civilians that got injured in the, in the war 2000. Um, eight and nine, and, and some, about this uh, And some associations were considering that uh, your view was very partial, right? Because uh, yeah, but it was uh, actually, you know, I mean, this was uh, it was was uh, it was really a little bit funny, you know, because because these people uh, went into the exhibition and tried to destroy it. Uh, we couldn't have paid any PR agency for the public relation they gave us, but <laughs> you know, so it was not very well thought out, you know, and. Um, so a, a bit more general question, like uh, among all these places that you visited where there are physical walls now, I think um, something like 20, almost 20. No, I was uh, in 10, you know. But 10, 10 yeah, only place, yeah. okay. Uh, but what was the, I think, uh, where, where you see one picture of the, the Korean border, it seems like completely, what was the place that, let's say, marked you more and, and why? Uh, well, the uh, Korean border is the... I mean, it's the least visual. The, the, visually, it's the most it's it's the most difficult wall, but it's the most protected border uh, border because there's military all over the place, so it's really impenetrable almost. So how you, uh, how you even get there? I mean, uh, with the well, you know, actually, actually, I made a mistake in in brackets. Um, I went, you know, what I always do. I go to the because I live in Berlin, that's very handy. I go to the, to the embassy and say, I want to do this and this, and I show them some pictures from other borders, and then I try to get a permit, and in this case, I was at the, at the press department of the Korean embassy. South Korean, of course. Yeah, South Korean, yeah. yeah. Um, but that, that didn't help much, actually. The North Koreans couldn't have been much worse. <laughs> um, and I went there, and supposedly I had a permit, but it was really 
organizing wise it was a real disaster and uh, so I was lucky I got in contact with American troops who who provide the troops uh, inside the buffer zone and they basically gave me three days access you know mm -hmm. okay okay but is it the one also because okay it's, it's the, the most difficult accessible but is it the one that like personally and humanly marked you most uh, well you know I have no no, I mean, I everything is different. I mean, the most dangerous bore, I mean, the most dangerous place is Baghdad, you know, for sure. But um, in Baghdad, you can photograph at least, you know. So. Yeah, there is, I think, uh, over there, like a uh, uh, trenchy, like the last photo on the lower side, no? This is. Uh, yeah, that's in the. Like that, no? Yeah, this is in, this is in Baghdad. That's, that's downtown Baghdad. So here's more a, a protection of the market, actually. Um, so to protect the market, this is on a Friday. This is why there are no, almost no people. But most of the separation wards actually are between Sunni, uh, Sunni and Shiite uh, neighborhoods. So it's a little bit uh, yeah, equivalent to, to Belfast between Protestants and Catholics. Uh, you see really developing a very deep and deepened uh, reflection about what actual walls uh, do mean in our society. We, we chose a very, uh, very nice quote which, which closes the, um, our presentation of, of Kai's project. While barriers are a protection, they are also a cage. While being shields, they are also traps. So this is exactly what I wanted to ask you about. Like if you could develop the, the meaning of barriers, walls in our society, not necessarily of this particular ones, but of walls in general. I mean, what the wall does basically, you know, it's the last, the last refuge, you know. So also if we would have a problem, let's say, you know, so we don't talk to each other anymore. And then we build a wall and we also don't see each other anymore. But uh, the problem that we have between it's not also, also in a, it's also in a personal relation, you know. If I don't talk to you anymore, you know, it's obvious there, uh, there, is, a, there is a huge problem. And the, the point is for me, you know, it's uh, the only yeah, way to actually solve a problem um, is to talk. There is no way around it, how, how difficult it will be on a political side or also on a, in, a pers uh, in a personal relation. And um, so if, there it, is, if there is a wall, it means there is no will or no possibility to communicate. Well, it, it also, you know, the wall also marks a problem, or I can also say just the silence, which is also the wall of silence between people. It basically marks a problem as not, not resolvable, you know. Mm -hmm. And the point is also the Berlin Wall is actually the best, the best exactly. proof, you know, because when did we achieve something or when did we achieve peace actually when the wall came down? The problem was solved and not in 1961 when it was actually built, you know, I mean, concerning the German question, you know. And Confrontier is a project that it's ongoing, right? You, you will never say, I stop it here because I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's a little, I'm a little <laughs> bit doomed, you know. Unless, <laughs> unless all the world disappear in the world, which is not for tomorrow. No, it doesn't, it doesn't look like, you know, because this is the other thing, you know, I mean, in a, in a more general context, you know, we are, I mean, we are losing control over our lives. I mean, economy is our de facto religion, you know, and uh, money goes everywhere and at every time. So we, that uh, <clears throat> our economy is completely denationalized, you know, and most of, yeah, most of the people, they, <clears throat> we define ourselves mostly about nations, you know, but the nations can actually not protect us anymore, you know. And it's very simple, you know, for example, in Berlin, you know, Warren Buffett bought eight, for 800 million uh, last year, last year apartments, and that means that my, I mean, it's a little bit simplified, you know, but my rent basically goes up out of, uh, because of that, you know. Because of some international Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is, you know, so the, the, the local government, I mean, local, I say, the governments, you know, of the countries, they cannot protect their citizens from anything anymore. And that actually brought also this near yeah, uh, research, I mean, um, the reoccurrence basically of the border that people really want protection, so they ask for borders. But these borders, it's just like on the are, American. Are an illusion, yeah. It's just like on the American Mexican border, you know. The, Trump says, you know, we do something, we protect you, you know. But this, yeah. this wall, you know, if you are there, it takes the immigrant really between 30 to 45 seconds to get over this thing, even if it's 10 meters high. Because on the other side, you can put up a, you can put up a rope or a, a fire brigade ladder, 
there's no, you know, on the other side, so, they can, so do, they so can so do whatever they want, you know, and, it, it, you know, for example, uh, you know, it's here you can, you can see it a little bit, you know, one time I was standing here, approximately on the wall with the border, with the border uh, guard, so with the American border patrol officer, and one and a half kilometers down, the guy came with a blowtorch, and they made a haul in, and, and they run down, you know, and then the next turn, while we are running down there, the next one goes out there and makes another hole, you know. Mm -hmm. And now with all these battery-powered tools, <laughs> you know, you know these battery-powered tools that we have now everywhere, you know, you can make holes, holes and cut and do things all over the place. So it's, it's, just, uh, it's just an illusion. It's just a. Yeah, it's just an illusion. It's yeah. just um, a way of presenting feelings, right? Like, and you know, uh, it's also, you know, the, the American-Mexican border. You could also compare it maybe to the to the German-Polish border after the fall of the wall. I mean, there was a huge, <clears throat> a huge difference in economy, but what we really managed pretty well in Europe is to balance this a little bit out, you know? Mm -hmm. So sure, we had some Polish immigration, but now even people are going back because the economy in Poland locally is better, you know? So you have to balance these things out, otherwise there will always be immigration, you know? This is just... And people did that for centuries, you know? <laughs> Do you think uh, things in the next 30 years when we will be celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Berlin Wall, do you think that they will be, according to you, according to your observation, around the globe, uh, better? It's really, or it's really, it's that, really or that the walls will just grow, uh, keep on growing? It will be really difficult to say, you know. So the, we have will deal probably more with economic, uh, ecological issues, you know, that will have no borders anyway, you know, so. Thank you a lot, and see you, I hope, uh, in the next 18 days. And thank you, thank, thank you for coming up here.